front of God and answer. No, no, brother. I thought you was intelligent, but you've shown how stupid you are. Can you answer one tiny question? If you're prepared to talk, well, if you're prepared to answer questions, I will speak to you. If you're not prepared to answer questions, can you wear a mask? Can you wear a mask? No, you wear a mask. You're spitting. Well, you're spitting when you're talking. Well, there you are. Stay there. Stay there, and I'll stay here. Now, what do you want? You ask me a question. I answer it. Then I ask you a question. No problem. No problem. If a book, if a book contains, hello, son, listen to it, listen to it. If a book contains a book before an account, can you take that book seriously? You're jumping all over the I'm place, not. bro. I'm asking you about the Bible. What was the, what was the apocryphal account? Explain to me what it was. First John 5, 7. Rich, explain yeah. to me tell what me, it was about. Tell me. What was it about? What was it about? Remind me what it was about. Remind me what it was about. Explain to me what it was about. You realize the Quran also contains apocryphal accounts. 019, yes it does. What does that count? 70% is accurate. By your standards, 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 I'm asking you, but I'm asking a simple question. I'm asking a simple question, yeah? Every book contains a book before account, yeah? Can you take that book seriously? Let's just say hypothetically, it's a book of science. Can you take it seriously, yes or no? You're saying no. Hypothetically. You can't take Surah 19 seriously. Because that's found in an infancy account of Christ. That's also apocryphal. So by your own standards, you're finished your own religion. With respect, my friend, brother. you're out of your depth. You're friend. out of your breath there. My friend, you're out of your you understand English, right? Yes. Yes. Do you understand Hebrew? Not every word. No, no exactly. They see me last in Liniga. They see me last in Liniga. Besmo. Abandi said. Me last in Liniga. Well, you you don't speak Greek, but you, you are going to come here listen, listen, to me about listen, my listen, Greek listen, New Testament. Listen, listen, you see, listen, 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 watch yourself. Listen, you're saying, can we trust a book that has a pop before a account? By your own standards, you just shot yourself in the foot. You sure you're not? not my friend, my friend. No, 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 cradle whereupon the child spoke out i am a servant of allah he has given me the book and he has appointed me a prophet and that's an apocryphal account that's in the quran surah 19 okay that, one second that's found that's found in an earlier source okay that's found in an apocryphal gospel an infancy gospel where it says the same language we have found it recorded in, in the book of josephus the priest who was in the time of christ and men say he was caiaphas that this man spoke with Jesus when he was in the cradle and Mary said, Verily, I am Jesus, the Son of God. So that same story is found in the Quran, but instead of in, in, the, in the original translation of that, in the apocryphal account, it says, I am the Son of God. The apocrypha that Muhammad stole says, I am a prophet. He changed the word. So by your own standard, you're throwing in the Bible, you shot the Quran in the foot. This guy is finished. Is that it? Is that it? You coward! Brother, you coward! No, brother, you coward! You coward. You coward. Listen, listen, you're a coward. You're a coward. You were, you were, you were, you didn't even deal with what I said. What about my question? Yeah. What about my Look, question? I'm showing you the Did you even deal with I'm my question? Your own no, no, you ain't showing nothing. Standard. Shoot you're reading, you're, you're reading so from English. English. You don't even it. My friend, ask you a simple you question. Ask you a simple no, no. question. Can you take a book seriously? No. If it contains apocryphal accounts. So your Bible contains apocryphal accounts. The Quran contains apocryphal accounts, so we can't trust the Quran either. But how many Qurans are there? How many Qurans are there? There's shot yourself around. around. Uh, it's right. not only that. Right. There's, there's, also, right. there's also a Jewish story right. from his boy from, the, from an apocryphal account. There's a Jewish fable. There's a Jewish fable. I'm showing you how your own standard kills your own religion. There's a Jewish fable that shows the crow bury, uh, bury, uh, bury something to show Cain how to bury his brother Abel. That story is also found in the Quran. That comes from a Jewish fable. So by his own standard, his religion is finished according to his own standard. Is that it? Is that it? You finished. You finished your. You know, we've got to take. He's, he's not are, you are, you are, are those verses in the Quran? Are those verses in the Quran also found in a pocket of the account? Yes or no? 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 Y
contains a powerful account. You can't take that book seriously. Can you take that book seriously? Can you take that book seriously? Can you take that book seriously? No, of course not. Okay, so we'll take that book seriously. Okay, but does the Quran contain a powerful account? My friend, my friend. Does it, yes or no? Ask me questions. Does it, yes or no? Wait a minute. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. So now, your Bible contains a powerful account. Now, can you take the Bible verse? Can you take the Bible seriously? 1 John 5, 7. That's not a problem. Wait, do, you know, do you know what a prophet means? What is it? Tell me. What does it mean? A story that has been circulated, right? Wait. A story that's been passed on to people that's been widely circulated, that's been true, but what is a lie? That's not what a prophet for a cow. Tell what it means. What does it mean then? The word prophet means hidden. Okay, it means hidden. You, you don't even know what the word means and you're arguing about the hogfire. Now listen to me, okay? 1 John 5 7 is not a hogfire. 1 John 5 7 is not a hogfire. So what is it? It's a textual variant. Textual variant? Textual variant. Textual variant. So it is not a hogfire. No book. So you have so variants? Why you understand? Wait, wait, wait. So does Carl. You have variants? So yeah. One second. So, so now he's changing the subject. Now he's changing the subject. Wait, no, 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 no,
you can find a pocket bag in the crowd, for example, Sir 19, whether you like it or not, is found in a pocket full of items. Now, if you said to me, we can still believe in a pocket bag, and still, no, excuse me, if you said to me, we can believe in the crowd, even if it's got a pocket a pocket bag in it, I would say fair enough, but then you would have to attract your statement against the Bible. You see my point there? I understand your point, but my point is you're looking at it from an English perspective and a Western perspective when you're reading the Quran. The Quran is not for a Western perspective, nor was it written in English, right? And the other thing is what you said about uh, Ba'am. Agree, I agree what Ba'am said because I've watched many of his lectures. He said, and he, said, if he said what you just said, it doesn't really affect no the outcome. He but, says no textual variant yeah, right. affects any doctrine. But what he said, look, we don't have the original to check where these variants occurred. You have copies yeah? of the original. No, you don't. Like what? Like the earliest like early manuscripts. So where did they go to? Fourth century. Fourth century. Yeah. Fourth century. Yeah. century. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Where, 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 yeah. where was Sinaiticus yeah. 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 discovered? Let's, 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 me. let's me. agree to something. Tell me where Sinaiticus was discovered. See, this is the problem. I don't mean. I don't mean. This, you can Google it if you like. I don't mean this to be rude, yeah. You can make these statements as if you know what you're talking about. And all I'm saying is, look, I'm not saying you have to become a Christian today. But at least, at least, um, think about the argument you're making. Because, like earlier, with the apocryphal writings, there's a apocrypha in the Quran. So, by your own standard, you have to reject the Quran. I'm not saying you have to. I'm not saying today reject the Quran. I'd love it if you did. I'm not saying you have to in this discussion right here, right now. Okay? This isn't the case of losing or winning a debate. This is, this is the case of facts, okay? and the facts, of, the facts of the matter is, you misunderstand what Apocrypha is, you, don't, you didn't know that Apocrypha was in the Quran, you thought a textual variant was the same thing as Apocrypha, and you also don't acknowledge that Apocrypha is actually in the Quran. You're trying to say, well, you're looking at it from an English perspective. Well, no, because there are people who, who are in the Eastern world, for example, uh, Christians, for example, 4th, 5th, 6th century, who would reject the Apocrypha that is found in the Quran. Do you understand that? So it's not my Western view. There are ancient Christians who reject the Apocryphal writings as Apocrypha that are found in your Quran. Now, I'm not saying you have to agree with me, but at least drop that double standard narrative. So, have you heard of P66? Yeah. Papari 66, yes. And, uh, what about me? What, what, sorry, what does this have to do with Apocrypha in the Quran? So, no, 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 I'm getting uh, back to what you said about the variants. We're changing the subject. I'm not changing the subject. No, I, I'm we're, not, we're not here on a debate. No, no, I'm granting you. No, no, I'm saying, I'm granting you that there are textual variants within the Bible. But you have the same thing within the Quran. For example, when it says uh, that there's, there's, two, there's two variants within the Quran, two different readings, okay? One says that um, Christians are the worst among the innocents, and the other reading is Christians are the worst of all creatures. They're two different readings. Now, I'm not saying that uh, negates the fact that the Quran could be from God. I don't believe it is. But I'm not saying, based on the textual variant, the Quran's not from God. See, both of our books, any book that is in ancient history, has textual variants. Okay? Your book, my book, they both have textual variants. Okay? It doesn't mean either of our books are wrong because we have textual variants. We acknowledge our textual variants. You say there is no textual variant. And when you say the Bible has textual variants, I give that some kind of argument. Who is the one, who, who are the people who talk, you, who talk the world about these textual variants? There are Christians. There are Christians in history who mention textual variants. We don't hide that. So when you say 1 John 5 7, as if you found some point, we knew about that long before any Muslim. You only knew that just most recently. No. No. Before the NIV was written, everybody believed what the King James Bible was saying. Now that's right. Sorry, let me no, stop wait, you. Wait, wait, no, 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 Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, can I stop you for one point, just to address that? That's not true. Because but if you say every Christian believed in the KJV before the NIV, that, one, that's not true, okay? Let me tell you why. Because the KJV was not even the first English translation. Do you know when the KJV came out? The KJV, no, the KJV was brought out in 1611. Okay, it was revised in 17 something. Okay. Before that, what was it? Before that, you had the Geneva Bible. Yes. The bishop's that was Bible. The, that was the Protestant Bible, right? The Geneva Bible. The Catholics would use it too. But that, that's what I'm saying. So you're, you're making these assumptions as if they're true. I'm just telling you, trying to be nice, it's not true. You're, you're coming with false, false assumptions about the Christian faith that simply are not true. Now, the KJV does have textual variants. If you 
you try, if you look at an LRV and the KJV, you have different readings, like textual variants, like one John five seven. But the KJV translators were translating with the only manuscripts they had their hands on, okay? which is why they come to that translation. Okay, in one John five seven. The newer translations, the NASB, NIV. Uh, ESV, Home and Christian Standard, the Christian Standard, the RSV, the uh, NRSV, all of these translations we use the modern day uh, language because they're translated from the oldest set of manuscripts. So they're translated from the oldest set of manuscripts. So they, they, I would say, are much better translations than the KJV. Okay? Now, I like the KJV, I've got the KJV, but they are translated better. If, if you're, if, let me put this to you like this, way. If you've, got, if you've got a Quranic manuscript yeah, that is 100 years after Muhammad, and you've got one that's 500 years after Muhammad, and they're slightly different readings, you go with the earlier, yes? You have to, because that's the closest time to Muhammad, it should be the most accurate, yes? And I'm saying it's the same thing with us. We, we use the manuscripts that go back to the earliest accounts. I could actually bring you a really good book on this. There's, there's a good book on this. It's between two Christians who actually debate this topic. Okay? One of them argues for the, uh, the majority text, the other argues for the other set of texts. Okay? It's a really good book. It's only about 100 or so pages. I, I, I'm coming next week. I, I can bring you that book. And if you, you can read that in like a week, it will delight you and it will, it will teach you a lot of things. Because these misconceptions you're coming with so are that, minute. they're misconceptions. So wait a minute, was 1557 a uh, deliberate fabrication? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a mistake. Yeah, I mean, it was a mistake that was... So from 1611 uh, till when the NIV was written, 1801 if I'm correct, right? That period of time, people believed that verse to be 100% accurate. No doubt. I, I don't deny that. But that, that them believing that 1 John 5 7 reads as the KJV says, that doesn't affect their salvation. It doesn't affect their salvation in any sense of the word. Because that's what I'm trying to get at. That, 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 let me say this again. And ultimately, you're going to say that's where you guys get the Trinity. I'm saying no, it's not. I'm saying right now, I can open my Bible and I can show you that I can I can show you the Trinity without even going to 1 John 5 7. Oh, amazing. Go for it. Let's okay. do this. Okay, so uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. You're gonna make notes, yeah? <laughs> 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 Okay, so in Deuteronomy, it said the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So Christians believe in one God. I know you guys say you believe in three gods, but we don't. Listen to what we actually say. We believe in one God, okay? We believe there is one God, one being, and three persons share that one being with God, okay? The Bible clearly, if you would agree, calls the Father God, yes? You would agree that the Father calls the Father God, yes? Okay, what's the language? The Bible calls the Father God, okay? By the way, I wasn't trying to catch you out then using the no, no, no. Father. But the Bible calls the Father God. So we can agree God is God, okay? But the Bible also calls Jesus God in multiple places, okay? Jesus even refers to himself as God. In, uh, in uh, John chapter 8, verse 15, when Jesus says, For Abraham was I am, okay? that's coming from Exodus 3.15, where God says to Moses, Tell Pharaoh, I am the sacred. So when Jesus claims to be the I am of Exodus, he is claiming to be the God of Moses. Okay. Because what? Well, if God says I am this language, okay? Before Abraham was I am, when Jesus says that, so he's clearly drawing back to uh, Exodus 3 And do you know how we know that the Jews understood that point? Because in verse 59, they picked up stones to try to stone you to death because they said it's blasphemy. Because you, you know, the Jews actually said, you keep the man, you make yourself God. They, they understood his claim to be the right place. You read Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, okay? I'm not trying to overwhelm you with information on what you think about this, okay? If you read uh, Revelation 1, 17, one second. Revelation 1, 17, Jesus says, I am the first and I am the last. Now that's again coming from the Old Testament. God says in Isaiah 44, verse 6, um, I am the first and I am the last. So when Jesus says I am the first and I am the last, how is that not a divine 
explain, you know. Now, the Holy Spirit is also called God. If you read Acts chapter 5, in Acts chapter 5, there's a story of uh, Ananias and Sapphira. They're a husband and wife. And they sell, at the time, the context is this. Christians are all living as one, okay. They were selling their things, giving it to the apostles. They were all sharing it among themselves. And they were as one community, okay. Now, Ananias and Sapphira sold their land. And they gave all of it to the apostles. So it wasn't really all of it, okay. Because they kept some back for themselves. And Peter, Peter knew this. He basically said to them, the land was yours before you sold it. You should you basically you could have said to us, here's some and keep some for yourself, but you didn't, you lied. So Peter, Peter said to them, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. And then he said, You've not lied to man, you've lied to God. So Peter said, You've not lied to God, excuse me, lying to the Holy Spirit, you've lied to God. So there we have the Father being called God, the Son being called God, and the Holy Spirit is still being called God. So there we have said there's one being of God, three persons. And if you read, if you want to argue the fact that the Holy Spirit is not really a person, read uh, John 14, John 15, John 16. We see the Holy Spirit has personal. You said quite a lot. Pick up the Trinity. In the Trinity, how many gods are there? One God. One God, three persons. One God, three persons. So you said uh, the, the Father is God. God is just. Who's the son of the father? See, now, now, ah. No, no, no. Wait, I'm going to pick. Wait, no, no, wait, that's a good question. Let me, let me say why. That, that's an ancient heresy called Sabaeanism. Okay? Sabaeanism is, is modalism. Okay? When you say, is the son of the father, that, one second, that's Sabaeanism, which no Christian Can I believes. you on that foot for a second? So now, on, on uh, Genesis, uh, the fall of man. Uh, after um, Eve disobeys, well, Eve didn't know, so after Eve yeah, eats the fruit and gives it to Adam, right? And they eat the fruit, they hear God walking, coming, so they hide. Which part of, which, which part of the tree was that? Was that the father or was that the son? Okay, so walking in the Garden of Eden. Okay, good question. So, you could, well, if, if somebody wants to say, ultimately, it doesn't really matter to me. If somebody says that's the father, or somebody says that's a pre-incarnate vision of Christ, I, I accept that because we have something called theophanies. Okay, do you know what theophany is? Okay, if you stay in Genesis, a theophany is an Old Testament appearance of God, yeah, or a Christophany, an Old Testament appearance of the Son before he was incarnate. Yeah? If you read Genesis chapter 18, if you stay with Genesis, you'll see that Abraham is met by three men. Okay, and uh, two of these men are called angels. Okay? Because these are two of the angels who are sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? And the one who stays, Abraham is God. Okay, and we'll say, who was that? Was that the father or was that the son? I'm getting that. So we'll say that where Moses, where the Bible, yeah, the Old Testament says no one can see the father. Okay? We'll say that the only way we can reconcile this in Genesis chapter 18 is to say. That that one was visited by the Lord, the free and part of the Christ. And you also heard this in Isaiah. If you read one second, one, one, one second. What do you mean by that? Three, uh, eight, okay, so the incarnation. Okay, so the incarnation. So he, he's preaching or something else. It's a vision of Christ before he enters into the flesh. So he has a vision. One second. One second. He has an actual. So that vision was that the father, the son. One second. So that's the son. Let me tell you explicitly. That's modalism. You know, what? That is modalism. Because you're you're separating the two now. The father is one being. And the no. son is another being. No, 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 let me explain to That's you. That's modalism. No, no. You know what modalism is? Okay. You're, you're no, no, not getting it. Or separatism. Relax, 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 relax. relax. Modalism, okay, is, okay, the doctrine of the Trinity is one being, three persons, okay? So when I say, if I was to say to you, the son, How? one second, if I was to say to you, the son who appeared in Genesis 18 is the father, that's modalism, but I'm not saying that. And let me explicitly show you, okay, let me explicitly show you where there is a pre-incarnate vision of Christ, and we know this to be Christ because of John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, okay, it says that Isaiah saw the glory of God, saw the glory of Christ. Now in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, okay, it says that Isaiah saw the glory of God, okay, he saw God's glory, yes? In John chapter 12, Did you see God? one second, it says he saw his glory, so he says he saw God's glory, in John chapter 12, he says that God's glory, God's glory who Isaiah saw, was the glory of Christ. And there's a pre incarnate vision of Christ. This is what we call Christophany or Theophany, whichever you like to use. Okay. So that, and by the way, you misunderstand modalism. If, if I said the Son is the Father, the Father is the Son, the Holy Spirit is the Father or the Son, that's modalism or surveillanism. Okay? We, don't, we don't say that. We say the Father, Son and Spirit are three distinct persons, but they're all God. 
because they share the divine essence. If you read Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, one second, one verse. If you read Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, it says that Jesus is the perfect imprint of, oh sorry, the exact imprint of the nature of God. So Jesus shares nature with God, but he's not God the Father. So they see the two persons distinct. In Acts chapter 5, you see the Holy Spirit as a person distinct from the Father and the Son. In John 14 and John 16, you see the Father, Son and Spirit all being called God, okay? But they're distinct in their person. You see that in John 14 and John 16. Not being person. You're conflating being a person. Whatever use the language person. I don't even want to get into that. You don't have to know, I wouldn't either. So look, you said so the sun is... By the way, can we go for like a couple more minutes? Because I would really like to get coffee, is that okay? Sorry, you can walk with me and we can chat. We'll just do it now and then we'll come, we'll come back to you, yeah? I want to go for a quick break as well, yeah? So you said that Jesus is uh, God, right? So if God is on earth, who is he praying to in the Garden of Gethsemane? And this shows that you have a misunderstanding of Trinitarian theology. Because what you've just said would be true under surveillanism or under modalism, as we call it, okay? Because if God is a modalistic God, where one minute he's the Father, then he's the Son, then he's the Spirit, and you're right in what you're right in your thinking. If God the Father becomes the Son and enters human flesh, then you're right, who would be in heaven? So who would he be praying to? Well, that's not what we believe. We are Trinitarians, one second, we are Trinitarians, not Unitarians, okay? And because we are Trinitarians, we can say that the Son entered human flesh, the Father remains in heaven, okay? So when the Son comes down in human flesh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8, says, Although he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God as something to hold on to, but he emptied himself, okay? Which means Jesus, the Son, the second person of the Trinity, entered human flesh. So the Father was still in heaven, okay? So when Jesus enters human flesh, he's not going to become an atheist, he's not going to become a rogue deity, he's going to continue his relationship with his Father through earthly means, which would have been prayer. So that would work under a Sabalian view of the Trinity, but we're not Sabalians. Whether you want to admit it or not, but look, by you, way, you, one second, one, I'll let you have the last word because I really want to copy. Okay, no problem. So have the last word. Whether you want to admit it or not, but the moment you say there's a God in heaven and the Son or part of Him came to earth, that's modalism. That's already He's you know, changing. Tell me what modalism is. The Son is not the Father. What, the Father what, what is, is not the Son. What is that's sabalism? modalism. No, what's sabalism? What's sabalism? You what believe that sabalism? God came into a mode. What is you sabalism? said it. No, it's no, a no, mode. No, he came what, into a mode. Tell me what's Jesus. What is sabalism? So he was a separate mode in the garden. Of uh, Eden, uh, in, in the fall, in the Garden of Eden, you're separate. Mode. Your words, not mine. Whether you want to admit it or not, because you're, you're going through your own belief system, yeah, what you believe in. But what the Bible says and what you believe in is two different things, yeah. So the Bible says that God came to, uh, was in the Garden of Eden, and the Garden of Eden, mind you, they believe the Garden of Eden was on earth. So God came to earth, was walking, yeah, so meaning he has feet, yeah. Sorry, he's walking, so that means that's a mode. And then you have Jesus comes into another mode to be sacrificed. No, yeah? no, 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 that's two modes. Of modes. You don't understand modalism. That's modalism. Let me explain to you. That's a mode. Let me say, you Whether you want to admit modalism. it or not, it's two different things. What is, what is so modalism? You say I had, I had the last thing. Modalism basically, uh, God coming into separate modes. Modalism. No, no. It's no, coming from no, one modalism. Mode. God is one being, one person. One minute is the Father, then the Son, then the Spirit. It comes into separate that's modes. modalism. Yeah. I'm saying the three distinct persons have always existed. Persons, exactly. But those are three different modes. Those persons are modes, aren't they? If the Son is not the Father, and the Father is not the Son. Okay, do you know what? And the Son worships the Father, but the word Father never worships the Son. Yeah? What is it? Listen, listen, I'll, I'll tell you what, okay? Anyway. You've, had, you've had a good chat. I, I encourage you to watch this video. Um, the, the arguments you just brought up there, I've already refuted it at the beginning of the conversation, okay? I would encourage you to watch this video on Soko Films, and I would say study church history. We don't, under, we don't understand. Because when you just, when you just uh, explained, explained modalism, you just demonstrated you don't actually know what modalism is. Modalism comes from the man Sabalius, yes. where we get the term Sabalianism. Uh, in a sense, you're right, you're right in some of your thinking, because if Sabalianism is true, but when Jesus died, the Son, the Father also died, which leads into another heresy called Patripassianism. So I'm telling you this, you don't understand the doctrine you're trying to argue against, right? That's all I'm going to say. I get what, it. I get watch, it. What, watch this video and rethink some of your arguments, okay? Why does the so-called film ever do any programs about Mexico? 
what's going on in Mexico. I don't want to show it. No, but Sokol Film, all the time, he's always making mockumentaries about Islam, but he never makes a documentary about his own country, his own backyard. Okay, let, me, let me answer that. The cocaine. Let me answer that. The, the, there's let me answer gangsters that. are walking let's into me. churches, killing babies. They're spraying up churches, but he never talks about that. Can I answer that? But the moment a Muslim farts in a corner, he's going to make a video okay, about that. Can I answer that? Okay, the only way I can answer that is if you go to speak to the man who runs the front side of the I've talked to him already listen, many listen, times. All, all I am is a debater. Why do you support him? All I am is a debater. My debates are on Soka Films, but Soka Films is not my channel. I have my own channel. So go speak to the man who runs Soka Films, not me. I, I don't control I what he looks on. Take care. Peace. Yeah, so, um, going? Okay, so basically, Mr. Brown, and I don't want to keep going over the same discussion because it becomes tiring. I need a coffee, okay? But basically, watch the video back. You'll see Mr. Brown uh, make some fundamental errors. He doesn't understa understand Sabalianism. He actually um, misunderstands Sabalianism. He explains Sabalianism in a wrong way. Okay, he makes a many Christological errors. We explain that, but I would also like you to notice that at the beginning of at the beginning of the conversation, he did say that can we trust a book that has apocryphal writings in it? Okay, I said no. He said one John five seven is apocryphal. I said no, that's a textual variant, and we acknowledge that that is in fact a textual variant. Okay, you learn the textual variants from us. We don't learn them from you. Okay, now I apply that same standard to his Quran, because if he can't trust a book. That has textual, uh, that has uh, apocryphal writings. That when uh, in Surah 19, the Quran has an apocryphal writing that is in an infancy account of Christ, found in Surah 19, he would also have to reject that. But notice he runs away from that point. He runs to modernism, which he doesn't even understand. But pray for the man that he comes to Christ.